well-being part? <laughs> Haven't started working on the well-being. Don't, don't be shy. That's it. Guys, okay, at this rate, you're going to be failing. Have a very strict rate of this quarter. So start getting your acts together on all fronts, not least of which well-being. So what I also uh, failed to warn you about at the beginning of the previous lecture is that uh, you know, that lecture got very, very abstract. But don't worry, we're going to get back to concrete stuff, fun stuff, stuff uh, that you can feel uh, as early as today. Before that, I'll just quickly, so basically what I want to do today is quickly recap the essence of the main piece. And uh, yeah, I hope I did manage to obfuscate beauty and simplicity of what the AP is saying. And if I didn't bother too many of the technical details last time, but I wanted to recap and also thank you to advice of one of you. I'll give a quick example. was a very small subset, not on the scale, a minuscule, minuscule fraction of this set in size of those sequences that are typical of this set. So this is a set of sets of typical, typical sequences. Was that so again? It's a set of typical sequences, namely the set of all sequences with probability of about to the minus n a. And what we found is that this is where essentially all the action lies. It's all likelihood your source sequence is going to come from here. Okay, so this set, this set has all the action, if you will. That's really the things that are happening. That's really where. 
the source sequence will be emitted from with all likelihood. And uh, we've talked about the size of this set. Size being essentially 2 to the power n h. Right? And that's almost immediate from the fact that by its definition, in it, we have essentially a uniform distribution. Right? In it, all sequences in it have same, right? same approximate same, same ish probability, right? All sequences in it have same ish probability of two to the minus n h, and, and its overall probability is about one. So again. Essentially, a uniform distribution of about 2 to the nh sequences, each of which have a probability of about 2 to the minus nh. Right? Can't be any simpler and straightforward than that. Um, and it also obviously suggests compression, or it suggests what you can hope to expect and what you cannot hope to expect in terms of how many bits do you need for representation of the source symbol. Right? Obviously, if the action is in a set of size to the nh, then I should expect to have to use, essentially on average, no more than nh bits, right? Log of that to represent the element in here. So nh bits, and these are representations of a se sequence of a sequence of length n. So in other words, nh bits for a sequence of length n, so about h bits of source sequence. Right, is what I can get away with. But on the other hand, it's also clear that with, with less than that, with less than n than h bits per source symbol, I'll be able to cover only a min, an exponentially minuscule fraction of this set. And so there's no way in hell that I'll be able to um, you know, represent this kind of uh, you know, a significant sequence emitted from this source with with less than h So that's basically all there is to it. And let me also give a concrete example. Uh, the p, the h, for a source, which was suggested by one of the questions that we had here in real time. Yes? Um, just like, I guess, yeah, trying to make this a little more con concrete. Like, all sequences are epsilon typical. Like, what, what do they have in common? Like, what does them all having, like, right. occurring with so again, what they all have in common is that each of them, their probability is essentially two to the minus n h. For each of those sequences, if you ask yourself, oh, if you look at that sequence and you ask, like, in retrospect, what is the probability that among all of the possible sequences, that particular sequence was the one that was emitted or the one that was realized by this IID source? Okay. Well, well, how is that, like, What's the meaning of that? That they all have the same probability. Like, what does that mean? Like, how different could these sequences be? Like, what? okay. So, I think that the example I'm now going to give is going to give you a really concrete sense for that. Uh, and so, as usual, we try to make things uh, as Einstein said, as simple, as simple as possible, but not simpler. So, uh, simple as possible, but not totally degenerate, will be binary sequences, alphabet of size 2, so we all then will resort to binary non-examples. So let's assume that the source the U is binary, alphabet of size 2, right? so the U, the distribution U from which source uh, components are emitted is renewably U. Right? Everyone okay with this notation? U, mm -hmm. renewably Q. Say that u to say in our language that u comes from that binary alphabet, let's say so zero or one, and the probability of one is this q, parameter q, and the probability of zero therefore is one minus q. Okay. And let's say that I have okay, you know what? Let's let's say that you're now I look at a particular sequence, 
particular po possible sequence, binary sequence, u on u u n. Okay, u n is going to equal. Right, so give me a give me a binary sequence. Can't hear. What can't hear? One zero zero one. <coughs> Keep going. One zero zero one one zero zero one. Okay, good enough. Let's see. Okay, so then what is the probability of this sequence? Right? What's the probability that if I emit, that if my source emits these bits, I ID remove U, the realized sequence will be this. <laughs> right? Well, so let's see. Probability, the first component is one, is Q, right? And the second component, this probability is, is what? What's the probability of a zero? One minus Q. One minus Q. Right? So one minus Q. And then this thing adds another factor of one minus Q. And this, another factor of Q. And this, another factor of Q. And this, another factor of one minus Q. Right? So overall, I'm going to get U to the power number of one. Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Times one minus Q to the power Number of zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So that's the probability of one particular sequence, right? Q to the power of number of ones, one minus Q to the power of number of zeros. And of course, from general, right? From general, then the probability of any sequence that you give me is U to the power of Right, in words, that would make the number of ones in un times one minus q number of zeros in un. Right, and of course, remember there's some probability of sort of the probability of any sequence. Uh, and now we can talk, to, let, let's uh, get closer to this. So we want P or, you know, let's look at log of P, right? So log, right? So to be typical, we can say that log, log of your probability needs to be minus NH. Okay? So let's look at log of the probability of such a sequence, right? Log of this thing is what? It's number, number of, one in U N times right, I'm just taking log of this this log this log Q plus this power is the number of zeros in U N log of one minus Q. <coughs> right now but what do we know from the law of large numbers? So typical, and forget now the confusion, but now I'm talking about use in quotation marks. Typical in the sense of the law of large numbers. So typically, for a source like this, when the components are IID, right, we're moving Q, typically we'd expect what fraction of these do we expect will be one? And what fraction of these do we expect will be zeros? Right, again, I'm, I'm flipping coins, probability U of a head. Flipping at this point many, many times. Right, what fraction of times do I expect to see a head? The probability of a head is Q. About a fraction of Q, right? That's exactly the law of large numbers. So for a typical sequence, we know that this is with all likelihood going to be the number of say ones in UN will with all likelihood be close to N times Q. Okay, again, this is a little saying it's a fraction of Q, it's gonna be about the fraction of ones is gonna be about Q. So in a sequence of length N, we're gonna see about n times q ones, 
right? And similarly, or accordingly, then the number of zeros we can see in UN will, with all likelihood, be typically about n times one minus p, right? And so then, and so if you put this, these two together, right? You see that typically, for a typical sequence in the colloquial sense of the law of numbers, right? What is going to be the log of its probability, right? It's going to be very likely the number of ones in the UN will likely be essentially n cubed, right? Times this log u. Plus, the number of zeros in UN will be essentially n times 1 minus q, right? And then here I have log 1 minus q. Right? Or in other words, which uh, 1 over n, but let me normalize, 1 over n of this is going to be this 1, more familiar term that we had from last time, all likelihood minus that is going to be minus this, minus this. So with all likelihood, the sequence you're going to see is going to have probability such that minus 1 over n log that probability will be close to, what do we have here? Minus q log q, minus 1 minus q, log 1 minus q. What is that? Entropy. Thank you. Of what? This is nothing but the entropy of u. When u in our example was Bernoulli q. So, and by the way, in the context of Bernoulli q, I'll take the opportunity to introduce a notation. Uh, we're going to write small h of q because it's such an important quantity. We're going to write small h of q to denote the entropy, our usual entropy, with a special case where u is Bernoulli q. And it's a function very easy to, to study. It's a high school exercise to study this function and see that it looks like this. The function of q, which is h of q. Okay, so it's a metric around a half and concave. And it starts out with uh, here at zero and it peaks at a half with the value one. in our usual colloquial sense, you can see that it basically transforms into an essentially equivalent to, right? Uh, this notion of typicality is essentially equivalent to saying that you're going to see the number of ones and zeros and more generally the fraction of different symbols in the alphabet that I would expect from the law of larger numbers. And of course, uh, so for this particular example, it's specializing this picture Right, then this, in our case, is the set of all binary strings, right? So this here is, if you want to look fancy, you can write it 0, 1, the alphabet to the power n. <coughs> this is our notation for saying the set of all binary strings with the length n. Minus a few fraction of zero. Right. 
clause and I know what, if you really truly told me that your sequence was generated as coin flip and you told me the bias of the coin, it's very clear that what I need to focus on in my coding efforts are those sequences that are going to have you know, that kind of a bias, that kind of a fraction of one versus zero, and then I can treat separately those that are really good. So um, again, it's just silence, signal that the trivial move on, <coughs> or maybe signal of non-trivial <laughs> but move on. Because <laughs> let's get to the more exciting stuff. So okay, fine. So now let's start to look at. Uh, but again, here the message is more conceptual. I, I hope it all with me. That um, really what you can expect. Do, even in principle, if you have all the computational power in the world, you can really work on presenting sequences, you know, log sequences uh, jointly. You, didn't, you weren't constrained with complexity or delay. Bless you. You um, essentially what you can expect is to need, on average, no more than h bits per source symbol, uh, and uh, you can sort of get essentially you can obtain that. But now the question is what I want to do today is talk about concrete schemes and concrete ways of doing that. And we started started giving an example. I, I gave an example again at the end of the previous lecture. So if you can keep that example in mind, and we're going to do a few other and through those examples uh, introduce the most important concept of law of compression, which by the way, is what your appetite you that as early as the, the next lecture, uh, we're going to have a spectacular guest lecturer, or a spectacular guest lecture by Dimitri over there, trying to hide, but unsuccessfully. And he's going to show you how these schemes we're going to talk about directly uh, apply to and help us uh, represent and store and then retrieve genomic data in ways that are helping realize promise of personalized medicine. Okay, so that we look forward to this coming Tuesday. And so for today, promise we're going to look at concrete polyps collectively. What I'm going to propose to do is polyp concrete compression. And I'm going to start with an example, seemingly But it essentially captures all of what I want to do today and all the basics of all the schemes that are out there for lossless compression. So let's look at a source of an alphabet of size 4, A, B, C, D. Right? So that's a quaternary source. Let's suppose that probabilities, let me give you some probabilities in a table. So here's a possible source symbol, A, B, C, D. And I arrange them here in a descending order of probabilities. The probability of A is, uh, is going to be a half. A B is going to be a quarter. C is an eighth. Thank you. 